Good morning, gorgeous. How are you doing this morning? I hope you're doing wonderful. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Michelle Daff, and I'm so happy that you're here with me today. If you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you for being here again for another video in our series, His Crown. In this series, we discuss how you, my love, can be a beautiful, feminine, godly woman who exudes character traits that bless your marriage. They are traits that help you to become your husband's crown, a wife of noble character. And today, we're talking specifically about how to be a good wife. Now, this is not the kind of good where it's like, oh, you're a good little wife, aren't you? No, we're talking about how you can exude goodness in your marriage. In this series, we're discussing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and there are nine, and goodness is one of them. How you can exude the goodness of God into your marriage. Now, a lot of times when we talk about goodness, we also talk about kindness. And goodness and kindness are together, kind of like fraternal twins. They are very similar. But with the nine fruit of the spirit in general, they're all very similar. They're all pretty intertwined. So there's gonna be a lot of repetition. I'm gonna be saying things that I've said in previous videos because frankly, girl, you need it. You need the repetition. You need the reminders. We all need the reminders. In life, life just happens and so much goes on that we fall off of the way that we were trying to behave, the way that we really want to show up. And we need these kinds of videos and information to keep us on the right track and remind us of what we already know. So I want you to go ahead and sit back, relax, get something to drink, get something to write with, and let's talk about how you can be a good wife to your husband. For those of you ladies who love listening to marriage content, I encourage you to listen to my podcast. My podcast is called The Dr. Daff Show, and you can find it on all major podcast platforms, and we talk deeply about marriage. I go into things that are much deeper than what I talk about here on YouTube. We're also reading a book right now called Fascinating Womanhood, which is how the ideal woman awakens her husband's like most tender love towards her. And I go very deep into very important topics that really will bless your marriage. So I recommend that you listen to my podcast in addition to watching these videos, okay? So in talking about being your husband's crown and exuding goodness, let's think about when you first met your husband, how in love you were with him, or maybe you weren't in love at first, but eventually he was able to win your heart. You had all these romantic feelings towards him. Being in love just felt like the best thing in the world. You loved the love, right? But then you get married and life just becomes routine. You feel a little bit stagnant, things happen. We get into routines and we just kind of lose that excitement, that thrill, that rush. There's not a whole lot to look forward to anymore either because when you're dating, you're thinking about <laughs> getting engaged, getting married, having kids. But what happens when you already have all of that? It's like, okay, what else am I really looking forward to in this marriage? And sometimes losing that spark of romance and interest also affects the way that you show up as a wife because you don't really have a lot of motivation to be your best self in the marriage. And a lot of times we are not able to be good, good wives, good partners because we're looking for motivation we're looking for something to just wake us up and get us in that mode and girl that's not happening that has to be internal it's gonna have to actually come from you so what is goodness is anyone actually good well in the bible jesus says that only god is good that no one is actually good and that word good, like the true definition of it in the Greek, is actually a word that is very, like it's a very reserved word for God. Like it's a, it's a word that not most people can access because it's not a word that we can really be. Uh, I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but 
the word is really reserved for God. Only God is truly good. But we can be good at times. But in terms of the real pure definition of what good means, it's truly a combination of being good and doing good. And we're not good, but we can do good. It's considered love in action. And we're called to love. We're a lot of times, again, basing things on how we feel. We're waiting to feel something, to feel motivation, to feel passion, to act a certain way. But if you wait for how you feel, then you're never going to do anything. In marriage, you cannot act based on how you feel. I will say it again. I'll say it a little bit louder from the people in the back. When you are married, you cannot act based on how you feel. You cannot go off of your feelings. You have to act based on principle, based on the commitment, based on the covenant. And that is a covenant of love. The one that God has asked you to act upon. And love is an action. It's something that you do because you're being asked to do. And it's something that you can see. A person can tell that you love them based on what you do and how you behave. So the act of goodness is really the work of God inside of you. God is the one, because he is good, who's exuding his goodness through you. So let me ask you this. Can your husband sense the God in you? Does your husband benefit from God flowing through you? Do you demonstrate the love of God to your husband? Do you? That's a question to really think about because that is what this is all about. These are supernatural things coming from God through you to him. Is he receiving that? Is a package getting delayed? Is it getting held up? Let's talk about some ways that you can show goodness because I know sometimes we need some examples to kind of just jog our memories and think about ways that maybe we weren't so good or ways that we can be good in the future. The first way that you can be a good wife is really learning how to communicate with your husband. We all know that with any relationship, including your relationship with God, communication is number one. Communication is key. You have to have time and the ability and the desire to talk to him. Talk to him about things that are not going the way you want them to go. Talk to him about the ways that maybe he hurt your feelings instead of holding on to the resentment. Talk to him about fears that you're having. Talk to him about misconceptions that he has. Maybe he'll say something to you and you'll say, oh, I know he did not just say that to me. And then you can ask him, you know, hun, when you said this, this is how it made me feel, but I know you didn't want me to feel that way. It's just how I ended up feeling. Can you explain to me what you meant by that? Or if you think that he thinks something that is not true, having a conversation about that, communicating when you're afraid, communicating when you are thinking about something that you have coming up and you want to talk to him about it. You want to get his opinion. You want his direction. Learning how to open up that door of communication and not shut yourself in a box, not tell things to everyone else except him, but making sure that you have a solid flow of conversation about the things that matter in your marriage. Another way you can show goodness to your husband is by choosing to see him in the very best light. This is difficult because you're the one who is the closest to him. The two become one. You live with him. You see all of his faults. Like you know him, know him in a way no one else probably does except maybe his mother. <laughs> maybe. But with that, you have the privilege of deciding to see him in the best light, despite the fact that he has flaws like everyone else. And when you do that, you bless him so much. You show how good you are, because again, it's the goodness of God, of being able to accept someone and value and appreciate and admire your husband because he's him, because he's unique, because he's been designed fearfully and wonderfully by God and given to you as a gift. And that's worth looking at all of the positive things. It's not to say that you don't see his flaws and the negativity because you're human, like you see it. We're not gonna act <laughs> delusional. You see and you know that he has flaws. 
you know that they're there, but you're not going to focus on them. You're going to focus on the attributes about him that bring life into the home and into the marriage. And he knows that you know, but he will love the fact (laughs) that you do not dwell on those things. Another way that you can show goodness to your husband is by choosing not to dwell on mistakes that he makes, especially when you know they were a mistake. Now, this is something a lot of wives do because Again, when it comes to marriage, there's a lot of bitterness that can come in or little jabs that we want to take or little wins that we want to have, little, you know, points that we put on our scorecards. And when your husband makes a mistake, especially when it's a mistake that maybe affects the children or affects the family, it's easy to just get so upset and want to just berate him for it. But instead, giving him grace, showing goodness by giving him grace. So for example, let's just say he was supposed to pay something, a bill, or he was supposed to sign a contract and he forgot. And so what happens? The lights turn off or whatever it is doesn't get done. Instead of saying, oh my gosh, like you're so irresponsible. I knew you wouldn't do it. Why didn't you just let me do it? Like, why can't I depend on you to do the basic things for this family? You're supposed to be the leader. Instead of doing that, like he knows he messed up. Okay, he knows. Letting him know that you're disappointed, but moving on and Ending it with something positive and saying, yeah, I understand, you know, I'm sure that, you know, you've been so busy that it just slipped your mind, but don't worry, like, we'll find a way around this. I know you can figure this out for us. Giving him that encouragement, but also letting him know that you're disappointed, being honest. Being honest is very kind and very good. It's important for you to be honest with him, but also do it in love. Or for example, maybe it's something with the kids, like maybe your daughter was going to go to a science camp and he needed to fill out the registration form and you put it on his desk you're like babe make sure to fill this out give it to Cassidy before she goes to school tomorrow and he forgets and so because of that she can't go to science camp and now she's sulking she's sad you're like crushed because here you are seeing your daughter sad over something silly your husband could have just done and he just didn't do it absent-mindedness right that's frustrating because now you're not just mad at him you're also feeling bad for your daughter and you feeling bad for your daughter can spark up a whole different level of irritation and anger towards your husband but you have to allow him to make the mistakes and allow him to reconcile with your daughter allow him to learn from this pain and be there just be there and let it go remember that you are a team don't rub his mistakes in even if they're hard to watch overfeeding the baby you know he's giving the baby food and he's feeding and feeding and feeding your baby and the baby throws up but you're like oh why did you give him so much food you know it's like he didn't know he's trying but yes it's 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 stressful the baby threw up it's drama right but it's okay, you're a team, don't rub it in. He already feels so bad that he made this happen. Let him learn from his mistakes without your extra unnecessary commentary. You can also show goodness to your husband by not allowing him to deal with unnecessary pain. So for example, there are things that men just don't like doing, people but men especially. Certain things that have to do with like certain tasks or things with the children or maybe things with food, they may not wanna mess with it. And you can make his life easier by the simple things. And you can make his life a lot harder by the simple things. You know what your husband doesn't like because you're married to him. So you know the little things that he would prefer you take care of. So if he tells you that he's gonna take your child to the zoo, he's like okay honey can you just like help me get ready because he has no idea what to really do right you can make his life easier by getting your children's clothes ready making their lunch you know just making sure that they have everything for the day couldn't he do it yes he can do it should he be able to do it yes he should he's our father right but would it make his life a lot easier if you just laid out the clothes laid out the bag laid out the lunch so he just takes it and goes 
yes. But in this culture, we're all about like the little jabs, the little ways that we can make him feel like, you know, he's doing the responsible thing. He's putting in his fair share. We want to feel like everything is equal and balanced. And sometimes we just want them to feel the pain. I want you to know what it feels like to get this child ready. You think it's so easy? You think it's so easy? Okay, you go ahead and do it and see how easy it is. Sometimes we just like that that feeling of just seeing him suffer. And let me tell you, that's evil. That's evil. And it's so unnecessary. Again, you're one, you're a team. You should be working together. Would it be nice for him to know how it feels? Yeah. We want him to have empathy, but we want him to also have that admiration for you. And he will have it knowing that you're helping him. He doesn't need to feel the pain to know that you work hard, that you're a great mother, that you, you know, take time to do all these things that are really important, but time consuming. He appreciates that and he will figure that stuff out in his own. God will allow it. God oversees everything and he will allow it. <laughs> Trust me, he will know, but he doesn't always have to know. It's okay if he doesn't know. Give him that grace. That is you emanating goodness, the goodness of God flowing through you. Another way that you can show goodness towards your husband is just thinking about him when it's not so convenient to think about him. So for example, let's say you are out having dinner with your girlfriends, you're enjoying your evening, having a beautiful, elegant dinner, eating your steak and just enjoying the scenery and the conversation. But then you remember, oh wait, I didn't cook tonight. My husband probably doesn't have any food to eat. Instead of just saying, eh, he'll figure it out. <laughs> or maybe your friends are like, girl, please, he'll figure it out. Instead of just going with the conversation and letting him figure it out, you're his wife. If you know he depends on you to make him food, not to say that he cannot be self-sufficient. We know he can. He was before he met you, but you're his wife. Okay, you love him, you're his partner. And how you can show goodness is getting some food to go for him. Ordering a second meal and saying to the waiter at the beginning, I'm gonna order something at the end because that's gonna be something I take home, put it on a separate tab, whatever the case might be. Make sure that you order him food so that he has dinner when you come home. Now, is this necessary? Do you have to do it? No, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you don't have to do anything, girl. All of these things are you deciding that you want to do it. They're choices. And these are the things that bless your marriage. These are the things that allow you to be able to reap the blessings from the Lord. It may not be your husband who always appreciates it or sees how far you're going to make life comfortable for him. But God sees everything. And trust me you will be rewarded for these things. And if you have a wonderful husband who, you know, truly is able to see these things and bless you for it, then the blessings will come from him as well. He will know what a wonderful wife you are. And he will also bless you in so many ways and not just with buying you things or taking you places, but truly blessing you with his love, blessing you with the things that you desire from him, his time, his kindness, his warmth, all the things that you really want your husband to do, he'll start doing them when he sees the goodness that you are blessing the marriage with. Another way that you can show goodness towards your husband is by doing things even when they're inconvenient, when he asks you to do it. Now, you're his helper. And I know it's not always exciting to hear that. I know that we live in a world where women have their own things going on, their own job, their own passions, their own interests. And doing things that he wants you to do just feels very annoying, especially when you feel like, oh, you can do it yourself. Why should I do it? But that is not a godly behavior. It is not reflecting God in you. Instead, you can always ask, is there a reason why you want me to do this? But why even do that? Why can't you just say, okay, I'll take care of it. Now, if you needed him to be a little bit more mindful of your time or give you more notice, then you need to voice those things. Do it first. And then after say, honey, you know, 
in the future, do you mind just giving me a heads up about this? Not just letting me know at the last minute. It would really help. Whatever, however you want to say it. It's okay for you to do that. But in the moment, just flow. Say, okay, I'll take care of it. Instead of saying, why can't you do it? Because he doesn't want to. I'll answer that question for you, girl. He doesn't want to. He wants you to do it. <laughs> and we all do things we don't want to do. It's called life. And so if you would not talk like that to your boss, you would not talk like that to your pastor, you would not talk like that to your parents, why would you talk like that to the man that you love? Another way that you can show goodness in your marriage is by being generous. Being a generous woman, a generous wife. I want you to think about this and ask yourself, do you hold back with your husband? Or do you give your husband your all? In all aspects, I'm not just talking about your body, I'm talking about everything. Your vulnerabilities, your love, your deepest desires and thoughts. Do you hold back? Do you want to give your husband like a super long, warm hug and a deep kiss, but you just see him in the morning, you're like, good morning. Do you hold back? Is there a reason why you're holding back? Are you upset about something? Do you have unforgiveness in your heart? Because unforgiveness is like one of the number one marriage killers. Do you feel like he doesn't deserve it? Do you feel like he has to earn it? Why are you holding back? Being generous, having a generous spirit will bless your marriage and it shows the goodness of God inside of you. We live in a society where it's all about me, a very selfish generation, very self-absorbed generation, a lot of me time, a lot of, you know, my life, my way, my world, self-love, self-care, self-help, self, 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 self. It's all about us, even when we're married, even when you're supposed to be one. People still want to divide the line and say, but me? No, honey. When it comes to marriage, selfishness has to leave. And we have to have a spirit of serving, a spirit of gratitude, appreciation for our husbands, and the ability to deny ourselves, to say, oh, mm, really wanted that extra hour of sleep, but I know my husband wants some special time with me, so I'm not gonna pretend like I'm sleeping. You know, but we have to deny ourselves, deny yourself that extra hour of sleep because he wants to spend more time with you. Deny yourself going out because you want to help the family with the finances and save a little bit of money. And so you're not gonna go shopping like you would normally. To just deny yourself in, in different aspects of your life and you'll see how God touches your marriage. You can also show goodness in your marriage by knowing when your husband needs you to be strong. We live in a world where things happen and life happens. Things happen unexpectedly, plans change, and your husband sometimes just needs you to keep it together. Yes, there will be times where you can fall apart and you can panic and you can express how scared you are and all of that, but there are also times where that is not needed, where you need to have that conversation with God and put on your stone face and just get through it. There are things that your husband may not be emotionally able to express to you, like how badly he needs you to just flow and just zip it and just, just do this thing for him. There may be times like that and you need to be mature enough as a wife and have enough empathy for him and whatever he is going through to be strong and just get through it. Get through it. <laughs> Lean on the word of God for your strength. But when it comes to him, show him that he can depend on you to be strong for your children and strong for him. There are things that he's gonna need your strength for. Again, you are one. And you can't just say, well, he's a man, he's a leader, he's a protector and a provider, and he's supposed to be the strong one. You're supposed to be the strong one too. And not on your own strength. Rely on the strength of God but learn how to stand by him strongly when he desperately needs that from you. Another way that you can be a good wife to your husband is by showing loyalty. 
by being his crown, by being his, one he can depend on, where your husband doesn't have to worry that when he tells you something, you're gonna go and tell everyone that he cannot trust you with his secrets. He wants to be able to trust you with his deepest, deepest thoughts, with his fears, with just being on his side, even when you don't agree, showing up as one. And the last thing I'll leave you with, there are so many ways you can be good. And I actually want you to leave me a comment and let me know in what ways you can show goodness to your husband, because we can all learn from one another. We're all in this together as wives, as future wives. We know that we need wisdom. So if you have any ways that you can you know, just provide us with ways that you have changed in your marriage. You have started showing goodness towards your husband, or maybe you've seen other women show goodness to their husband in certain ways. Let us know in the comments below. But I want to ask you this question. Your eyes. Are your eyes good? In the word of God, it says the eye is a lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Matthew 6, 22. So in talking about being a good wife, are your eyes good? What do you watch? What do you let into your eyes? Because that's going to impact the way that you behave. Do you watch other wives that are good on television, on social media? Do you follow women who are good wives, who love their husbands, love their children, love being a wife? Who do you watch? What do you let into your eyes? Because that's what's going to show up inside of you. So many of us really underestimate the company that we keep. Are you around other wives who love being wives? Are you around other wives where when things are not going that well in your marriage, they speak life into you? They bring you hope? You know, you need hope. Marriage is like this so much of the time because that's just how life can be. And you're doing it together. And there may be times where you realize like, oh, I don't love him anymore. Hmm. Is that really what it is? You not love him anymore? Or maybe the spark is not there right now. Maybe this is the season of building and change or transition or growth or pruning. Do you have people can speak into your life and say, mm, that's not a good reason for a divorce. Not to say that they have the right to say that. I mean, you know, be careful who you tell what to. But do you have women in your life who can speak hope into your life and say, listen, I know that right now it doesn't look good, but meditate on this word right here. What does God have to say about this? Let's pray together. I'll fast for you. Let's fast together. Try this. Read this book. Do you have people in your life who are light, who have the light of God? Do you watch shows where women are cheating on their husbands and talking crazy to their husbands and doing all kinds of foolishness? Is that what you're letting into your eyes? Because those things are not good. And you want to be full of light. Otherwise, you'll be full of darkness. And eventually, those things will become your reality. You don't want that. So in being a good wife, remember to watch what you watch, who you watch, who you follow. Really watch how they talk about their husbands, their marriage, their families, their children. And... Pray for your husband. A good wife prays for her husband. Fast for your husband. Pray for your marriage. Fast for your marriage. Ask God to show you ways in which you can really become an excellent wife. You can really change. You can really show him the love of God. Ask God for ways that you can bless your husband. And he will show it to you. Lean on him and ask him for wisdom and he will give it to you. And you will start to see yourself change and actually love being married, love your role, understand your role, and work that thing, girl, until you become your husband's crown, the wife of noble character, the wife that you know that you should be. And I am here to help you, and I want to see you grow and change and heal and just be the woman that God has called you to be. 
And thank you so much for spending time here with me today. I hope that this video blessed you and gave you new ways to be able to think about your circumstances and your marriage and help you to grow in God and in your femininity. If you would like to follow me, you can on Instagram at Dr. Michelle Daff. And again, listen to the podcast, girl. Listen to the podcast, The Dr. Daff Show. Until next time, my loves, remember that in all things you do, make a feminine impression. Bye-bye.